everyone. Hey everyone, this is the NeuroHacks team. I'll be passing on uh, now to Joseph Choi, who has kindly accepted to come and speak a little bit about LinkedIn marketing and how to build your resume and CVs. And we'll also be reviewing some, uh, some of them live. So I'll also put in a link in the chat. If you guys haven't submitted them yet, please go ahead and do so. We'll pick a few of them live during the session and he'll go ahead and make live comments on them passing the mic on to Joseph. Awesome. Thanks so much, NeuroHacks team, uh, for organizing this. Um, this is super cool. I'm, I'm Joseph. I'm a, um, I'm a student. I go to University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And uh, this summer, I was an intern at Salesforce. I was a business operations intern. Uh, so I know a lot of you guys are software engineering, but um, or computer science, but uh, a lot of these tips can be applied to computer science resumes, uh, cover letters, and LinkedIn. And generally, like communication is is key for for really anything you do, um, whether it's cold emailing people asking for a startup internship opportunity, or you're making a cover letter and pitching yourself um, to the company itself. Um, you know, communication and writing is kind of at the core of what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to present my screen. Um, and I'm mostly going to be talking, but I'll just have a couple slides uh, so that I can sort of move along with, have a visual cue. So yeah, here's me again, uh, Internet Salesforce this summer. And uh, yeah, super interested in startups. I've started a couple of my own things. Uh, I have created e-commerce companies. I have uh, sold a lot of them. Uh, I did all of it in college. I learned the basics of marketing, Facebook ads, Shopify, copywriting from that. And now I volunteer on political campaigns actually. And I, pretty much use my advertising knowledge from that, uh, from the e-commerce, and I've taken it to advertising. Uh, so, you know, if, you, if you're interested in any of this stuff that I'm talking about, um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect and meet, meet you guys more. Um, we're kind of on a, like a webinar format right now, so um, we, we might not be able to have the, the kind of discussion that you might be able to have with me if we could you know, if you just connect on LinkedIn, feel free to send out a personal message. Um, hold off, don't send me a message yet. Let's go through this um, workshop and maybe you'll learn a couple of things about communication and then feel free to message me using the things that you've learned and uh, I think your message will be even better. So let's move on. So three tips for communicating. Uh, in general, so I'm going to be reviewing the resumes and LinkedIn profiles and everything, but just as a few fundamentals that I've seen across tons of resumes, tons of cover letters, tons of LinkedIn profiles, there are a few things that are pretty consistently true uh, that you should be worrying about. So first one is use numbers to quantify your impact. Um, you, you know, even if you did not have the most significant internship experience or work experience or class project experience that you may that you might think um, there there's always a way to quantify your impact whether it's how many people you presented to at the end whether it's um, how much money you spent on your advertising budget whether how much money you were in charge of for a you know an investment fund how much time you saved with an algorithm, what percentage 
uh, efficiency uh, you improved a process. Uh, there's always a number that you can associate with your impact um, and you should always use it in resume bullets, uh, but also in cover letters and cold emails and pretty much anything. Uh, second tip is show, don't tell. So basically that means there, there, are, two, there are a few ways to say things. Um, sometimes uh, a, a lot of the, actually a lot of times what I see on resumes and cover letters is that you, you talk about your responsibilities instead of your impacts. Um, and it's sort of like telling instead of showing what you did. So telling what you did, an example of that is when you say, you know, I was in charge of um, writing an algorithm that would increase the, the efficiency of XYZ uh, app. So the problem with that is that you're saying what you're responsible for, but you're not saying how, like who it actually affected, how it was um, the impacts that it had. So, you know, show, don't tell. It, it, a better way to phrase that would be, um, I created an algorithm. Notice the, the action verb, create. I created the algorithm or I wrote the algorithm, which had a 35% um, increased efficiency on the final tool or product. Um, you quantify it, you added, you, know, you added a number to it, and you had an action verb at the very beginning, which made it sound much more impactful, even though you did the same thing. Um, yep, pretty much. Uh, show, don't tell. And the third one is write how you talk. Pretty much, it's exactly what it sounds like. You, I think a lot of people have this, there's this pitfall of trying to sound professional and trying to sound official, but a lot of the, um, a lot of communication is just being yourself, talking how you would to a normal person. Um, you don't have to sound businessy when you write. That's just not true at all. Um, if you use lingo, you know, people will see right through it. Like the hiring manager is a real person. People out there on LinkedIn are real people. We, we all talk like this in real life. So why would you talk any differently when you're typing? Um, I've found that this works very well when I'm reaching out to people, even like people who I'd never expect to respond to me, like people with like 50,000 followers. I just send them a message, sound human. Instead of saying like, hello, sir. Like, I greatly appreciate your, <clears throat> your um, uh, the, the event that I attended, and I would love to discuss further about uh, opportunities in this space. Like, no, I'm just like, hey, hey, Matt, like, that was a really awesome webinar. I love what you said about this thing. Uh, I'd love to connect. It's just like, you know, be, be casual. Uh, I think that it inserts this human element that people um, are attracted to and that they are, I think they're more likely to want to help. Um, so yeah, so basically that's, that's, that's the three tips I have for communicating. I'm going to stop sharing for a sec and look at the resumes. So not sure how many exactly we're going to get to, but um, we can just do a couple. Um, hold on, I'm going to mute myself and then message uh, the Neural Hacks team. Well, I'll just tell you, Neural Hacks team, um, I don't think I have access uh, to the, so I have access to the Google form, but I don't have access to the folder that contains all the PDFs of the resumes. Uh, so just a heads up. But that's okay. I can start doing the, the LinkedIn profiles first uh, before I do the resumes. And then in the meantime, Neurohacks team, if you guys could um, uh, share the actual folder with me, uh, that would be great.
the folder that contains the resumes. I'm just going to open up all of these LinkedIn profiles because I think we could do all of them. Uh, so everyone who submitted a LinkedIn profile, I'm pretty sure we can just get to you. I'm going to open them all right now and then uh, we'll review. All right, I think I got the share, but we're going to start with the profiles anyway. <clears throat> All right, let's look. <clears throat> this is cool. I've never done a lot of profile reviews before. I've done lots of cover letters and resumes, but this is my first time doing LinkedIn profiles. If you want to get a little bit of a reference, um, this, yeah, let's go to my profile first. So this is my profile. Feel free to add me after this. Um, you don't need a personalized banner. I like having it just because it makes it a little bit warmer. Uh, very simple title. I like using the at. You don't need to use the at. Um, I, I put my job title of my most recent experience and then I put the school I go to and the year I'm graduating. That helps recruiters see that, oh, you're graduating this year. You're probably eligible for these types of internships. In the About tab, I say, I just introduce myself. Hi, I'm Joseph. Talk about the school I go to, what I'm studying, and then a few of my experiences. I like to use emojis. It helps kind of make it visually more interesting. And at the very end, I say, feel free to add a connection request. I'd love to hear more of your story. The call to action is very important in anything that you write. Uh, the last line should always be a call to action, whether it's a resume, cover letter, you know, anything, maybe not resume, but for cover letter and, um, you know, cold emails and LinkedIn profiles, always have a call to action, whether it's uh, send me a connection request, I'd love to hear more of your story, or um, reach out to me at this email uh, if you have any questions, or um, check out my profile, or check out my portfolio here if you have a portfolio. Um, I have a few of my featured posts. If you don't have posts, that's fine. Uh, you don't need to have this section. I didn't have this section before uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you can, but I, I also encourage you to post. Um, just post about your experience. If you don't have any experience, just post about your thoughts. Um, how's your recruiting season go? How going? How's your, um, you know, how's your resume writing? Uh, people want to hear your story. Um, and then for each experience, I like to put the resume bullets. I pretty much just copy paste what I have in my resume and put it in here. Um, some of them don't have them because I'm doing it currently and I don't really have many results to show. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I put all my experiences, I put them in order of you know when they happened. Um, that's pretty much it. So let's get to the first one. So Stanley, cool. Student at um, student at this university, capital competitor and ML enthusiast. That's really cool, actually. I like how you are you insert the Kaggle competitor. I think that's like a competitive um, competitive like coding website. Um, that's that's really good that you included that. It makes it it makes you sound more um, per personal, like a human. I, I like how you have. Oh, and then you have the Kaggle portfolio right there. Uh, data science competitions, right? Uh, and you put your experience. Actually, I really like this. I like how you said food service supervisor. A lot of people don't put in their first job that they worked at McDonald's or Panera or whatever. But I actually really like including the first job because it shows that you have work experience. Um, I think that the first job, whatever it is, it always teaches you a lot about professionalism. Uh, and just showing up regardless of you know how how you know not impressive you might think it is. I think it's always important to include all the work experience you have. Uh, this is good. I like uh, I like how you include your most relevant courses. Uh, it looks like you are how old are you? You graduated in twenty two. So you're yeah you're. But then oh I, I see you did like a. 
uh, college classes while you're in high school. So Vex Robotics, perfect. Coursera courses. Wow, that's great that you're already doing Coursera. Um, skills. Okay, great. Yeah, five, five programming languages or, or however many this is plus machine learning. Yeah, this is good. Your project. Huh, you won, you won the hackathon, okay, that's good. You got some honors, you did some courses. Yeah, so, you know, one thing I would say is that if you did a project uh, that was, uh, it's a 48 hour hackathon. I mean, I would even include this in your experiences if you really want to. Like something, that's like, I, I do that sometimes. Like for example, I have this project where I created it. Like it was a clothing brand and we had a couple hundred followers and you know, we sold some stuff, but like I, it wasn't like super, super official, but I still put it in here and I created a company page. It's really easy to create a company page. You just go here, work, create a company page right there. Super easy. Uh, I created like e-commerce businesses. Like I just use Shopify partners. Like just having that picture in, in the experience section really makes it look more official. Um, yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make a company page or just use a relevant company that already exists um, to put your experience, to put like a project like this in your experiences. Because uh, people scrolling through profiles aren't always gonna see this down here. Uh, that, was, that would be my main tip for you, Stanley. Um, I'd also make a bio. I would talk a little bit about why you're passionate about computer science or machine learning or data science or whatever it is. Uh, just say like, hi, I'm Stanley. Um, I'd love to meet you and talk about data science. I'm really interested in X, Y, Z things. And just maybe a couple of your interests uh, that don't relate to data science. Um, yeah, so I'll just connect with you. Um, feel free to send me a message. All right, next one. Data science intern at Nino Paul Inc. Uh, and a scholar. Cool, that's cool. I like how you included that, the year. Um, let's see, what year are you? Okay, you are third year in college, it looks like. Uh, so you're the same age as me. Cool, nice, fellow senior. Wow, it's great that you have um, recommendations already. Oh yeah, that was one thing I forgot to say earlier. Definitely ask for recommendations. Ask, the, ask for them from your past internships. Uh, ask for from anyone you've worked with in the past, like literally, uh, it, it can only help. Um, it, I would highly recommend like getting these you just just email them don't use the linkedin way of doing it like requesting using the button just send them a nice email and say like i'm really thankful for you know helping me in the past or doing xyz things for me uh, i'd appreciate if you could give me a recommendation so i, I really like how you have this uh, you got some honors publication courses projects you have a lot of projects that's great um, Licenses, see your experiences. Web content writer. Okay, so you know how I said, you know how I said on my profile, I like to write my descriptions exactly how I put on the resume. Like I just put bullets, right? Like see, I put the bullets here and then it's the same bullets that I have in my resume. So you don't have to do that. Like you did it, you, you did bullets here too. You did bullets, but then, oh, you did, okay, you did bullets there too. But sometimes you tell a story. So like telling a story is really good too. I like how, okay, you did, you did do bullets. My, my point was that, you know, you don't always have to do bullets. You can just tell a story 
and then use your resume as the resume. Um, I've seen people do it where they basically just explain in plain words and plain English what the what the experience was and when they did it. Uh, and I like how you said my very first internship, I wrote articles and website content for this company. Like that's perfectly fine. And then you attach your letter of recommendation. That's perfect. I like that. I actually don't do that personally, but honestly, I should. That's a that's a great idea. Um, I might um, start doing that after after I've seen this. Um, that's really cool. Um, I I like how you included all this, but then it's always good how you explain what the what the thing is because sometimes like people don't know just by looking at the picture or looking at the title of what company it was. So I always like to. Like sometimes I do that with uh, like, for example, this one, like I have these, these bullets, but then I say what the context was. I like how you did that for pretty much every, every single one. I like, uh, I, for this one, I just try to be consistent. Just say like, give the description and then give the bullets, just like how you did with the other ones. But you know, your profile is actually kind of better than mine, honestly, like this is really, I like how um, I like how you explain it and to the bullets. That's that's a really good aspect of it. I don't really have any advice for this one. Like honestly, uh, my my one advice to you is probably just be start posting. Like you have really good experience, and you should start posting more. I mean, it looks like you already did. Never mind. <laughs> two days ago, one month ago, two months. Okay, so I mean, you're not posting that often, but I would definitely. Uh, keep keep going at it. Um, you have some interesting experience to share. Uh, when you start posting, you you start making more connections. You will start to just find more opportunities. Just be nice to people, and you know eventually you'll find opportunities. Like you don't need to. Like sometimes you don't even need to, need to apply to jobs. I think a lot of the connections, a lot of the opportunities that I've had are basically created by talking to people and not really by applying to jobs. So great, yeah, great profile. Uh, let's see your about section. Perfect, you just briefly summarize it. Helping machine C, trying to, what do you do? <laughs> I like that, that's cool. It's, a, it's catchy, it's kind of a unique line. Shows your personality. I think that's the whole I think that's the whole point of LinkedIn profile, right? <clears throat> show your personality, show that you're a real person. If they're like there's no point in LinkedIn if you're just gonna regurgitate your resume and just make it look the same as your resume. If you insert things like this to show your personality, what you're passionate about, that's what LinkedIn's all about. Uh, I'm gonna I said that I would get to three more, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to get through them. I'll try to go a little bit faster. Student, let's see, uh, engineering, digital, university, okay. Uh, okay, cool. I do like these like, you know, non-professional skills like meditation, yoga, personal development, self-management. Those are always good to have. Just talk about anything like networking or uh, time management or, um, you know, discipline, just like meditation. Like those, those things are good. I like putting those. Uh, you won this hackathon or you participated at least. Um, not much. I mean, it looks like you're kind of in your first year of college. Um, so you don't have a ton of experience yet. Uh, or you know, you're not first year, you're going into your second, maybe third, I'm not sure, second year. Yeah, I mean, once you get more experience, you'll be able to put more of that there. Um, if you did any clubs, I would just put that in your experience. If you did any clubs in college, I would definitely put that in experience. I used to do that too. Uh, I put it down here. Um, I would pretty much just put it like, I would, I would name my university so that there would be a picture. I would put your university and then instead of saying student, 
say the title that you had in the club and what club it was, and then talk about what you did in the club. I think that's, that can, that's an experience. Like, like everyone has to start somewhere, right? My first, my first thing was, was this biological software team. That's, that was my first experience ever that I, that I wrote on my LinkedIn profile before I had any internships and talking about how I was the vice president at this club, this software team helped me to get my first internship because I was able to talk about it. Um, so, you know, just join a club if you're not in a, cl in a club. If you're not in a club, that's fine too. Um, just talk about a project you did. Um, but I would highly recommend joining clubs and just talking about that as your first experience. <clears throat> Web developer, let's see. Are you in school? Yes, you're in school. Um, I'm assuming this is high school, I think. 2006 to there and then 2020 to there. It's only three years, I'm not sure. I'm like, it might, this is just my, this might be how it works in India. I'm not, maybe it's like different, but um, cool. You already have an endorsement for skill. Looks like you're kind of a front, front end web developer. Let's see, honor. Test scores, cool. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you're still in high school. I mean, you don't have a ton of things to talk about um, yet, but you know, your web developer, your freelance, show your, uh, I would definitely make a, um, a portfolio. Just talk about all the websites that you've made. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you would know how to do that pretty easily if you're, if you're already doing web development for freelance. Um, this is really cool, actually. Like, I, I definitely had, I didn't even make, guys, like, I didn't make a LinkedIn profile in high school. I had no idea what LinkedIn was. So that, the fact that you guys are already on top of this is really great. Um, I would just make a profile, uh, portfolio, sorry, um, and you're a chemistry tutor. So that's, I mean, that's all I would really expect from a high school student, really. Like, there's, there aren't many opportunities for you guys to have experiences yet. So I like how you already included a um, couple of things like tutoring and web development. Let's connect. Cool. Okay, lots of experience. Rising senior, just like me. My current experience says me that you are unacapable. I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> My current experience says me that you are capable of doing big things in the future. I'm not really sure what that means. I would, I don't know. I, I would just like make sure that um, that you know what you're trying to say. I'm not sure why you capitalized the it says me, but do you have an experience called says me? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just like to put my clubs and my involvement and maybe the grades in here. Uh, let's see, self-employed student, student model. Oh, you're a model, that's interesting. Social media manager, that's good. I'm the core member of this team. I would just capitalize these things. If these are num if these are names, I would capitalize that. Student ambassador, online trainings. Okay, you need the technologies, that's good. Yeah, okay, it looks like you did this for a long time. You did each of these internships for like two months at a time. Okay. I mean, here you have like July 2020 to present, and then June 2020 to August 2020, and then this one's also July. I think you have a lot of like, I mean, you obviously did a lot of things at this experience, this Linux world, informatics, but I, you know, just, just to make sure you're like not, so like, I had to click 
see more two times. So you like show five more roles and then show two more. I had to click it twice. Recruiters are not going to do that. They're not going to have time to read all of this. I would I would condense this into two or three positions. Just talk about like see you have ambassador programs and then you have ambassador, you have training, ambassador, and then you have three intern, 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 intern. I will put the three internships into three different categories, but then I wouldn't include the ambassador. I would just include that you are an ambassador in the description of it without putting it and, and also the training without making a separate experience. It just makes it very long and kind of hard to read. Um, I mean, it's great that you have all the experience, but I would probably just shorten that. Ambassador, I mean, you, it's kind of the same thing with this one. I would make sure that it's not too lengthy. I like that you did a bio. Not everyone does that. Experience in having relationship skills and communication skills among people. Uh, you don't need to say among people. I would probably just keep it with you know good leadership and communication skills. You don't need to repeat good either. Just say experience and having a good leadership. Okay, that's also like just a small grammar mistake. Just remove the word having a. Just say good leadership skills and good communication skills. That's pretty much all you need to say, just this right here. Um, passionate towards data science, uh, just like passionate about. Okay, here's a website that you guys can use. Let's use Grammarly, just type in all the stuff in Grammarly. Uh, it's a free Chrome extension. Um, just make sure everything is like grammatically correct. Uh, there's, a, there's a few of them in here. Uh, just make sure like everything is grammatically correct. I like your, I really like your headline. It's like really, you know, hybrid, multi-cloud. Yeah, I mean, this is like all the experience that you have or all the like languages. I would, I would say your school too at the end if you want to, if you think it's relevant. Last one. This is the last one and we're going to go to resumes. Budding machine learning engineer goal. Uh, oh, budding machine engineer. And then I would put a, you know what this is, like the, like the line, like the vertical line. I would put the vertical line right here or like the two vertical lines that the last person did just to make sure it's like, you know, separated. Because it looks like goal is like in the same part as, as the second part. But I can, now I can see that you're saying like your goal is computer vision scientists currently competing at Kaggle. I would actually remove goal. I would just say, yeah, budding machine learning engineer. Line, computer vision scientists currently competing at Kaggle. Yeah, I think that's fine to, you know, just say goal. Um, and then capitalize Kaggle, make sure you capitalize names every time. In search, uh, in search for a deep learning intern. Uh, say, make sure you say internship, in search, in search of, in search of deep learning internship. Again, Grammarly, uh, just uh, ambition, computer science, vision scientist, that's cool. I like, I like the personalized aspect of it too. Logs, um, cool. Wow, you already you're like writing on like on medium. That's great. Uh, here's your engineering um, college, and then all of these licenses, and then projects. Perfect. By the way, you guys can show your video if you want. Like, um, yeah, no problem if you if you want to. Um, I would just capitalize that. Cool, awesome. All right, I think you guys wanted to do resumes, so let's do resumes. OK, 
we have seven, and then we have 23 minutes. So that's like three minutes per resume. Let's, let's do all of them. 12.37, all right. Resume. All right, it's one page. It's good that it's one page. Uh, signature, actually, I'm just gonna look at a couple of them so I don't say the same thing for everything, okay. Cool. Cool. Nice. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Let's let's go to this one first. Um oh, maybe not. Okay, let's just do this one first. Um cool, it looks great. Uh email, everything looks good. Experience, competitions, education. Okay, I mean it looks like you're about to start college, so or like you're you just started college so it's yeah it's fine that you don't have like actual job experience yet you have all these projects and you have college i mean there's not that much i would change about this resume honestly like it's pretty good let's look at your in terms of format so let's look at competitions and competed in applied ml and quantitative analysis Thirty-five, thirty-fifth, TH. Make sure it's thirty-fifth, not ND. Um, top five percent, top one percent. That's really good. I would actually just say that first. Like always, put the more impressive statistic first. Just say it's top five percent out of nine hundred head competitors, and then in parentheses, thirty-fifth place. Like I think that subtle change really makes a huge difference. If you just put the more impressive part first. They're top five percent, super impressive. Top one percent, also super impressive. Put that, put that stat very at the very beginning. Just put it right here. Top five percent of nine hundred ten competitors. So here's here's what it is: experience working in real world, non toy data sets and creating data pipelines. So. This is what I was saying about show, don't tell. When you say you have experience working with real data sets and creating data pipelines, don't say that you have experience doing something. Say that, say exactly what you did. So what did you do with the data sets? You said that, no, actually, so you're saying that this is Kaggle in general. So all your Kaggle competitions. So. Actually, I take it back, I take it back. You can just say this. Since you're, since it's multiple experiences, it's sort of hard to explain specifically what you did. Um, I like how you bold the technology that you used. That's really good. See, this is great. So you say developed, you say created, you say optimized. These are power words. They're action verbs. Um, keep using those, that's great. One hackathon, thrived in remote team, calculated. Achieve 3% superior precision. See, that's great. Another example of quantifying your impact. I mean, I don't have a ton of other like feedback for this resume. That, that was pretty much it. Like put your most impressive statistics first. That's pretty much what I would say for this one. Go to the next one. Skills, programming, experience, projects. Okay, I would put this all on one page. Resume should always be one page. Um, if you don't know how to do that, like make, try to make a two column resume. If you can't, if you really can't fit it, one column is better. Like try to make it like this where you make the text smaller, you make the spaces between each one smaller, like there's a ton of white space here, ton of white space here. Just make everything all in one page. 
Uh, you have a great experience though, projects. You did lots of projects. You link your GitHub, it's perfect. Experience, you did three freelance websites. Design animations and templates, go ahead. Okay, so you know, you said, okay, so you made interactive AI bots. You should, so the framework that I like to use is context, action, result. So what was the context of it? Who did you make it for? So I would say who you made it for. Next part is action. Action is that you made the interactive AI bots. Perfect. What technology do you use though? It looks like you use that for the UI, but what about the, so like you use Python, like it's in the title, but I would just say you like in Python, just like made interactive AI bots in Python. And then what was the impact that it had? What did you, you know, what was the impact? Can you quantify it? Um, so you say who you made it for, and then say AI, and then you say how you did it, and then you say what was the impact that it had? Did you get feedback on it? No. Java developer design, you know, this is pretty much the same thing as the first one. This is the same thing as that too. So when you say skills in Java backend development, I would just, you can shorten this. You can put it all into one point. You can just say you designed and created UIs using Java Swing. And then did you use, like, what did you do for backend development? Instead of saying you're skilled in backend development, like, what did you do with backend? Um, same with this front end. What did you do in front end? You know, you design animations and templates. Talk about a little of the process that you went through to make that. See, this is a great example of exactly what you did. A simple tic-tac-toe made in Python using the Emax algorithm. Perfect, like I would put that in, in your experience too. The way you word it here is much better than you word it here. I would put it exactly how you wrote it like this in here. You make it a very clear description of what you did. This, this is a great description. Program that checks symptoms of certain diseases and predicts the probability of the patient having the disease. It is built in Java using Swing. Perfect, that's perfect. You should put that uh, here too. Next one. Final year student in the stream of computer science and engineering and final book in deep learning. Uh, I have secured the top seven of comp in the competitions. Perfect. I have helped the startup work analyzing SEER breast cancer data. Works, skills, personal projects, interests, languages. Okay, skills. I would make sure, I'm not sure it's because that you translate it into a PDF or, or not sure why, but you know, make sure you have spaces between all of these. Uh, it's, it's very like, um, you know, it's scrunched together right now. Personal projects. If these were like big projects that you did, I would talk about them. At least give one line for each project. At least one line. Um, you you did one line for each of these too. So I would I would do one line for each of your projects. I would put projects before skills. Put skills right after projects, so you, that you have works. You could also say experiences, or you could say. I don't. I'm not really sure what exactly it is. I mean, it looks like you, it's Kaggle mostly. So, so do works and then personal projects um, and then explain these. Like, these are great experiences too. It seems like, you know, personal projects are show that you're passionate about stuff and you're not just going to do it for a school or whatever. So I would, I would keep the personal projects like explained. Involve uh, denoising signal data, extracting features from them, train the model, help predicting seizures. So see with this, involved is not a great word. Let's, let's think about what you did here. 
What did you do? Is it gonna let me comment? I hope it'll let me comment. It does. Involved denoising signal data. So, so here's here's what I mean by show don't tell. Say use action or verb. You say denoised signal data. Extract extracting features. No, you know what? You know what? You say extracted features from signal data. Oh, you know what? You said that you said the impact at the last part. So you just say trained. Um, what kind of model was it? Trained model, something model. Um, trained models by extracting features from signal data. which helped predict cheap seizures. And then for who? Who was it? Was it a certain hospital? Or was it a certain type of people? I don't know. Say who it was for, or what it was for, what company it was for. Train models by extracting features from signal data, which helps predict seizures. See, you say what you did, how you did it, and then the impacts that it had. So I would, I would change that. And you pretty much use the same, same uh, way of saying it for each uh, experience. I'll just change it to this model where you say context, action, action, result. This one looks good, I like this. Courses, technical skills, leadership, internships and projects, education. Good, I like this format, this is really good. Um, let's see, fabricated. See, you even, you, <laughs> see, you, you already know, you already highlighted the, you bolded the action verbs. Um, fabricated architecture, enhanced scripts, so like that's a little bit vague. I would just I would just make sure you're explaining that a little bit more. Worked over communication interface. So you say worked over, uh, that's a little bit more vague. It's a little bit vague too. Uh, a lot of these things don't have like the numbers, the quantitative aspect. So I would just, you know, quantify. Quantify your impact with numbers. So you did it here, but you didn't do it here. Um, even if you didn't have numbers that you can show, think of you know who did you present to. I think that's that's a fine way to show your impact too. You are good. Let's say leadership. Leadership is oh, interesting. Co-founded Barrow. Food ordering and delivery application for the college premises. Created designs that provide a meaningful and relevant experience to, to users and handle the business aspect of the startup. Great, awesome. I would say specific. Show, don't tell. So handled is, a, is okay. It's like a word, but it doesn't really show the action that you did. How did you handle the business aspects? Did you have to market it? Did you send out 100 posts on social media talk about the quantity how much you know what did you have to do for the business cool okay no i like this this is good this is like this is a great resume how many left one two three we can do it, let's do it. Education, okay, numbers, that's good. Internships, projects, skills, training. Achievements, good. Additional information, 
is like leadership, volunteering. Cool, internships. Developed module of automation testing. Okay, here, here we go. Let's say more impact on to fly if and to fly if possible. Talk about you know quantify this. Um, how you know how many tests did it do? How much time did it save by automating uh, tests? Uh, think of a number. Think of a percentage. Think of an amount of time. Think about an um, amount of money. If you don't know the answers to these questions, reach out to your your manager and ask them. Like, how you know how did my experience, how did my work affect your company? Inputting data. So I would say inputted. I would be always use past tense. Always use past tense. Say you. Entered, you could say entered, because inputted sounds kind of strange. Um, just say like, you know, entered data automatically in a website through an Excel sheet through Selenium automation framework with Java and testing the, so say tested, again, tested the authenticity of a given data using Apache POI. Email spam detection projects. Data analysis, exploration, engineering features for the prediction of spam emails. So there's no verb here. Where's the verb? Um, just say like, like it's really awesome that you did this. Um, but I would say like, you know, analyze data, explored something, prioritize features. Um, talk about the the verbs of what the like what you did. Uh, for the prediction of spam email. That's cool. Methods used. Great. I'll just make sure you, you know, punctuation, make sure you put the comma right after the word and then the space after that. Same here, same here. Make sure the punctuation is good. Prediction spam email with an accuracy of 94% accuracy. Um, yeah, I mean, you said accuracy twice. I would delete the second one. Let's delete this right here. And everything else looks fine. Great. This looks really nice. I didn't even, this is cool. Okay, it looks good, but it's two pages. I would definitely put it into one page. Unless this is a CV, like CVs are longer. Resumes are supposed to be one page. And this, this looks more like a, a resume than a CV though. I would probably make it one page. So this is a super long summary. In order to make it one page, it's, it would be pretty easy to cut down this. It's good that you like put all, like look, you, you listed all the technologies, but like you could just list those in your skills. Like you already listed them in your skills here. You don't need to list them again here. Um, Like you say, passion towards data science, data analysis, and you say cloud technology is close to my heart. Like, it's good to show personality in a resume, but I would just cut it down to like this long, like this long, put it this short. Also, there's a lot of white space here. You could cut down by, by shortening the white space here. Um, let's see, in this ML ops, also, I would just space it out a little bit more. So you have a lot of white space in between each one, but then you have no white space in between each resume bullet. So it's, it's very hard to read what you did. And this is a really, I mean, you have a ton of experience, but the problem is like, it's just hard to read. Like, um, I mean, it's well written. Like it's actually written very well. And you say all of the, like, I don't know if it's necessary to say all of these things, like deep learning, neural network, computer vision, linear regression, and also regression. It's like a lot of these could be probably cut down. Um, 
And you might be trying to do that because you're trying to pass the resume scan where they automatically scan your resume, but it's fine. Like you already put it, you already put these skills here. You already put it here. Like just, I, I would, I would cut down as much as possible. Um, like you might pass the resume scan because you repeated all these words, but once the, the actual person reads it, it, it'll be very hard for them to read. I also put bullet points. So like, just put like a bullet, like, a, you know, like one of those bullets, uh, put three for each one. Resume, okay. This one's a little bit hard to read. Um, education, I mean, that part's fine. This part's fine. Um, your, your, ex, like your basic contact information takes up a lot of space. Um, again, I'm not sure if this is how it works. Like this is just might how it works uh, in India. But I mean, I was seeing the other ones and the, the other ones don't look like this. So like you could definitely cut down on the contact information. Um, you see how this person here, just like put it at the top very briefly, very short. Just phone number, email, LinkedIn profile. That should be enough and GitHub profile if you want. Yeah, I think that's enough. Um, yeah, so this, this, all this information could take up like this much space right here. Like from here to here would be fine. Uh, education. Yep, it's fine. Um, I, I mean, I would take away this like grid format. Um, it's good. I mean, it's, it keeps it organized somewhat, but there's other ways to organize it. Like, let's see. Did you have education here? Education, yeah. So you can just like be very brief about it. You know, what you're studying, college, and then, and then the score. Like, I think that there's a lot of extra uh, space. Computer knowledge, that's good. Uh, achievements, awards. Extracurriculars. Date. Okay. This is a lot of things. Um, are you in are you in high school? Sorry, I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. I mean it looks like you're in college. So I I would just make sure that your extracurricular activities are a little bit more organized. Like I would, I would put um, neural hex team, is it time? I, I have like 30 seconds, <laughs> if that's okay. Um, vice president of, you know, I would, I would organize these things into like maybe three, three activities that are the most, the most important, or maybe four, and then put a description of it after each one. Um, and you can you can make a hierarchy of of what it looks like. You see how there's a hierarchy, like you have an internship and then you have the name of it and then you have the description. I would try to follow that model in yours too, where you have you know extracurricular and then the name of it, your title, and then what you did. So yeah, that's the advice I'd have for this one. For this, I mean honestly, the advice I have is to just find a template. Just like there are resume templates on Google Docs it's from a template. You just go here and choose a resume template. Like there's lots of resume templates like this. You could, like there's lots of them. And you can also just go to Google and just search like, uh, re like resume templates. Resume template downloads free Google Docs. Like lots of resources out there. Uh, yep. Pretty much that's all I have for you guys. Um, if, yeah, feel free to add me on LinkedIn, message me. Uh, let me stop sharing the screen. Um, Joseph? Yeah, what's uh, up? I had a question. Um, yeah, sure. First of all, thank you so much for doing this. I learned so much from you. Uh, no so problem. the thing is I'm in high school and um, I haven't really used LinkedIn that much. Uh, and because of that, I never found a need to like actually update it. But so how would you, what would you think of, um, what would you like, 
ad advise me to do uh, for LinkedIn since I'm in high school? Like, what would you tell me to do? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I probably wouldn't really, I mean, I wouldn't worry about it. I didn't use LinkedIn at all in high school. I would just focus on your resume and just your like writing skills for cover letters if you ever need to do cover letters or just like cold emailing people for opportunities. Like if you want to do research in college as you're going to college, you can just be like, you, know, you can cold email people and send them your resume. But I don't think they really look for LinkedIn, LinkedIn that much. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, what about for like uh, opportunities, like internships, stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I've found, like, I have not, I haven't found any internships on LinkedIn. The, like the opportunities that I've found on LinkedIn are usually like collaborating with other students on projects, mm -hmm. uh, meeting people in general. And it's kind of a long-term thing. So, I mean, if you really want to, um, you can start networking with people on LinkedIn. But um, for internships, like there's so many websites that you can use. AngelList, uh, AngelList.co. That's my favorite website for, actually, I'm not sure if that's what the URL, but that's my favorite website for finding startups. Uh, you can just like cold email all, literally all of them. <laughs> and lots of good startup internships there. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Oh yeah, I mean, any questions? I don't know if, uh, angel.co, perfect, uh, in the chat. I don't know if we have time. Oh, you said any questions, go ahead and ask. I'm just looking at the chat messages. Thanks, everyone. Happy to help. Any more questions? If there's no more questions, you can end the session. Uh, we can also, if you have more questions later, you can add me on LinkedIn and send me a message. It might take a little bit to get back to your message because I have a bunch backed up right now, but send me a message, personalize it. Say, say that you came from Neural Hacks uh, if you want to send me a message um, and I'll remember like where, where I met you. Thanks everyone. Good luck on the hackathon. This is really cool. I think it's gonna end in a minute, so we can just wait. No problem, guys. All right, I do have my next meeting to go to, so I'm gonna sign off, guys. Uh, message me on LinkedIn. See ya. <laughs>